In this short video, we're going to talk about what I think is one of the best features of R. That is the add-on functionality available from R packages. Now, the best of these packages are hosted on two repositories called CRAN and Bioconductor. There are many, many others on GitHub as we'll explore kind of naturally as we go through this course. Here in this short video, we're going to focus on CRAN and Bioconductor. So what are these? Well, CRAN, it stands for the Comprehensive R Archive Network, and you can access it here at this URL. It's basically a network of mirrored servers around the world, so that different web servers uh, around the world redundantly hosting these packages. And they administer R itself and R documentation, but also these packages. Basically, they're add-on functionality for R. At the time of recording, there's around 16,000 packages on CRAN. And this covers all sorts of areas, you know, from finance and, of course, bioinformatics. We're working about machine learning, high-performance computing, lots of uh, multivariate statistics methods, natural language processing, et cetera, et cetera, sports analytics, et cetera. This is, you know, in my view, just a crazy impressive amount of add-on features and abilities to do cool science and, and other analytics work that, you know, for this domain, no other uh, analysis software will come anywhere close to this ability to, to do these things that we can do in R. Now, since anyone can contribute these software packages to CRAN and also the second resource bioconductor that we'll talk about in a moment that focuses primarily on bioinformatics methods, anyone can contribute these packages if they meet you know, some minimum quality requirements and robustness and lack of bugs and things like that. You can contribute them to these projects but it doesn't mean that everyone goes to the same extent to make their packages as good and enjoyable to use as others do, just like on those app stores, for example. So some packages you know, are extremely high quality, but others are less polished. So in general, you know, all packages, uh, like, like, like I'm showing here with these cakes, you know, have the same kind of ingredients. They have good documentation compared to other academic software you'll find. That's because CRAN and Bioconductor ensure minimum standards for documentation, for example. And some packages have truly outstanding documentation. They're really enjoyable. Things you would like these cakes here. But others, you know, are not going to be as fun or as enjoyable to, to eat, even though they have those same ingredients, as we talked about with our bioinformatics databases before. So you'll find that often there are multiple packages to choose from. You know, they analyze uh, data of a specific form, and sometimes these packages are in direct competition. And that's actually good for the end user. And it's our job to find out which are the most popular, which are the most enjoyable to use, and which ones are going to make you most productive, and which ones are most robust. And we'll talk about strategies about how to do that, how to find the cakes we want to eat, or the packages we most want to use in these uh, cases. So uh, a side note here in, in this uh, in this respect is that you know the journal Nature Genetic, the premier journal in our field, it had an editorial on the sharing and use of software for genetics uh, a few years ago. And at this point, when this was published back in the mid 2000s, CRAN and Bioconductor really stood out, like they still do. Uh, you know, when you compare it to other software repositories, CRAN and Bioconductor were highlighted. In fact, they're the only software. You can read this quote here behind me. They were the only software repositories that were endorsed by this journal. And that's a good thing. This reproducibility that this software and this infrastructure brings is what science needs. So where do we get these packages from? Well, in CRAN, you can you know, go to um, the CRAN. This is where you would have went to download R itself back when we began our course. And it's kind of crazy to go. You can see down here on the side where I've added the red annotation, there's a list which will take you to an alphabetical listing of these 16,000 odd packages, which is rather unuseful, of course. Now, you will frequently end up at a CRAN website if you just Google for a particular package. For example, you know, you're reading a scientific paper and you see they use a particular software package, a particular R method or R package, and you Google it and you'll find you know, one of the top links will probably be CRAN where these packages are hosted. And you'll end up at a page like this. And you can read a little bit of you know, quite dry verbiage about what the package does often. But the main points, if you end up here to explore, are the URL. That's this first red box here, the, the higher up one here, which will take you to the home page of the package. That's usually a, a good place to start exploring. Increasingly common, you'll see as in this case here, there's a, a Bitbucket page or a Git 
GitHub page that tracks the development of the package so you can check the heartbeat of it to see if it's under active current development and what kind of uh, uh, communication the developers have with users. Are they uh, responsive to questions and bugs and, and these sorts of things that will all usually take uh, place on GitHub or, or Bitbucket style repositories that we'll uh, delve into in our hands-on section. And also highlighted, and this is probably more useful here if I move my head out of the way, is uh, the, the, the links to the documentation for the package. The first one here will be a, a, a reference manual, and this is not as useful as the second one. That, what this first one is, it's a PDF document that combines all the function help pages from the package. The same thing that you would get if you put question mark the name of the function. This will all be collated here from the so-called RD files, or the help files of the package. Now the second one, it's much more useful. These things are called vignettes. They're little task-oriented introductions. They're essentially tutorials, but quite focused on analyzing a particular uh, type of data or doing some particular functionality that this package focuses on. And, and these are a great place to start with a new package, these package vignettes. Okay, so how do we actually go and install them? Well, we maybe found a package we, we like, we figured out whether it's on CRAN or not, and then we can use this install.packages function from R itself, from BSR, along with the name of the particular package you want within quotes, within you see those speech marks there. For example, here it's this Bio3D package. So we're gonna go and, uh, and install this one with the install.packages command. And that's a one-time only deal, as, as we talked about before when we were using uh, ggplot, for example. We only have one computer, and then it's there. It's, it lives on your computer. Every time you want to use that in R, in your new fresh R session, you're going to have to use this library command. This will load the package up into your R session, so you can go and use the functions that are available and the features that are available in this package. And we do this every time because we don't you know, load every package that we have, because that would be needless. We don't always do this particular analysis. Every time we use R, we maybe do other work, and we don't necessarily need to load it and waste the time and the memory and everything of, of doing that. So we just uh, call it when we need it with this library uh, command. So, uh, you know, where can you, you find uh, many, many more bioinformatics packages? The, the one that we just installed, the Bio3D there, that's a bioinformatics package that's available from CRAN, but there are many, many other specialized bioinformatics packages on a second separate repository called Bioconductor. So Bioconductor, it really focuses on high throughput genomic data analysis and you can see the web link here. Now the idea or the name you know really stems from the background image here you know the realization that there are tons of great tools and packages for bioinformatics out there and they're good at accomplishing maybe specific quite limited tasks but in analysis you know the kind of work that we do in computational biology and bioinformatics usually involves using multiple tools and multiple packages all together. And one of the big ideas, one of the big benefits of Bioconductor is, you know, from the early days, this realization that we needed all these tools, hopefully, to work and integrate well together, to get them to work together. And the mental image that Bioconductor kind of uh, summons up is this idea of great tools. Here are the individual musicians in an orchestra or a big ensemble band here. And the project, it uh, is the conductor. It's trying to make sure they all play well together and they all share and they all play to a common tune to help these things work and to make the lives of us as an analyst and mathematicians much uh, more enjoyable. Right? Life without music isn't much fun. Right? From a more kind of pragmatic perspective, Bioconductor, it's really just a collection of software packages, R packages, just like CRAN is, but they're written uh, uh, of, of course, in R, just like the CRAM packages or the, the call other methods and tools underneath. But the idea is they have these rules and guiding principles that ensure they work well together and actually will uh, work collaboratively. So often when you use one backend calling methods from other packages, sharing features to enable things to work. Yeah. You know, time of writing, there are nearly 2,000 packages all dedicated to some form of bioinformatics analysis there on Bioconductor. And this is a resource we're going to use a lot in this course, and indeed in your future work, hopefully, as you, as you go through. So for the academically inclined, you know, Bioconductor started around in 2004. That was this initial uh, first reference that I've placed here. This was the kind of manifesto back when the project started. 
And then the second reference here, I'm just putting the, the latest uh, publication out of this project at the time of recording this video, and it, it's all focused on new methods and new tools, for example, for single cell kind of RNA-seq expression analysis. And both of these articles, you know, they do a good job of making them accessible and, uh, and, and quite readily understandable by quite a wide audience of, of biologists, general biologists. So how do we install packages from Bioconductor? Now, the critical thing here to note is it's different from how we install packages from CRAN. They have a separate mechanism because of this uh, idea of everything needs to play well together. They need to ensure all those packages are in the right versions and that they'll uh, all talk well to each other. So they have a separate install mechanism to try and help ensure that. And we have to and install first a package from CRAN called BioC Manager. That's the manager that's going to look after the ins installation of all these Bioconductor packages. So we'll install that in the traditional way as we just described with install that packages. And then once you have that installed, we'll use a function from the BioC Manager package to install Bioconductor itself, the base of, of, of Bioconductor, if you will, that gives you a minimal working set of Bioconductor packages. And that's the install function. You see here, in the, I'm just calling the one individual function install from the BioC Manager package with these two colons rather than loading up the whole package. But you could do that if you wish. And then if there is another package that isn't in the core, for example, in a couple of classes time called DEseq2, which is differential expression analysis, one of the premier methods out there for doing uh, RNA-seq expression analysis. Uh, and we'll install that using this command. We'll issue the install command function uh, from IC Manager and the name of the package we want to install. If you want to find out more about the installation process or if you have some issues with that, the, the Bioconductor website is actually a really good resource to go to find out more. Okay, so I have a request for you and that's for you to start exploring, to start looking around and seeing what kind of apps you'd like to install, what kind of packages would make your working life uh, and the kind of analysis you want to do easier. So I want you to go please and pick a package. You can choose one from this short list or if there's another one that you've been wanting to explore for a while, you're very welcome to explore this. These packages here, uh, uh, some of them are from CRAN, some of them are from Bioconductor and you'll have to find out which is which because you'll have a different install mechanism of course. So. Once you've picked the package, I want you to jot down your answers to these questions. The questions are, you know, how does it extend the R functionality? In other words, you know, what can you do now that you couldn't do easily before? How is its documentation? Focus uh, particularly on those vignettes, those uh, and demos and its web presence. Can you, of course, successfully follow those? Can you get it up and running quickly with the package by using those vignettes? And then can you find a GitHub or Bitbucket site for the package with a regular heartbeat? By the heartbeat, I mean, do people care about this thing? Do people love it? Are they uh, updating it regularly? Because you don't want to start basing your work, your critical uh, research work on some package that hasn't been updated for years, that you know, no one now takes ownership of or, or is responsive to bug fixes. You want to see that it has got an active development uh, behind it, and hopefully a community, multiple people who are able to answer your questions and, and uh, make this thing better and grow with you as your research grows. So I've put a couple of these packages in bold here in the yellow font, and that's because we've already seen some of them, or we will in this week's lab session. For example, ggplot2 for data visualization and plotting, we've already dealt with. Bi3D, uh, we're going to install and play with it this week. Our markdown we're going to use as well, or we have been using actually to make our reports. So we'll talk a little bit about that. And then this one, dplyr, is a really useful package. We haven't used it extensively. I've actually given you some dplyr code, but we haven't really uh, sat down and talked about it in, in great detail. So this is a, a good one. I recommend maybe you pick dplyr. But you are, of course, to, to explore any packages out there from this list or elsewhere. And have, have fun. See if, you can, uh, see if you can get these things working. So I'll finish this video now with a, with a kind of recommendation and the key kind of take home message. The recommendation is go off and explore, go break things, go learn how these things work. And the idea is, you know, that we're growing here, you know, using existing base functions in R, the kind of things that we've been doing to date in the class. It's a bit like riding the bus around campus. You know, it's relatively straightforward. You just need to know which 
bus to use and where to get on and then get off, right? How to use, you know, the bus is here is the function and you just need the input and the output. That's the kind of analogy. And it's relatively straightforward. Now, being able to use CRAN and Bioconductor packages, find them and install them, it's like having access to Uber, right? Or Lyft or another rideshare. They can take you way more places, uh, but they're often going to cover, you know, just big cities, maybe not the most rural areas if your work is is uh, not as well populated an area, for example. You're not gonna maybe find a package that does exactly what you need to do. So writing your own functions here is like the last one. It's like driving an SUV that's, that's you know kitted out with a kayak on the roof and a bike on the back. It'll take you more work, of course, to get there. Uh, you'll need to know how to, how to drive the thing, how to write these functions like we covered in our previous video. But ultimately, it'll give you the flexibility to go way, way uh, more places and that's super exciting right it'll make your uh, life more fun actually so in our day-to-day -day work in our lives of course we need all these modes of transport to lesser or greater effect depending upon where we are in our research or where we are in our uh, journey of learning these tools so as you progress you'll find you'll naturally get more adventurous and that's where the fun really starts to come in when we start exploring things when we get tricked out with all those tools like the bottom here in this SUV. So let's keep going, let's uh, let the fun keep, uh, keep building, and please uh, join me next time in our next hands-on session this week. Uh, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.